everyone, so after my last dining debunk where we went to Panera, a lot of you guys requested that I do a dining debunk on sushi. So it's not about a specific restaurant, but we are gonna talk about healthy sushi choices. Now, a lot of people think that sushi is inherently healthy because it's fresh, or it can be, but that isn't always the case. Healthy is of course a relative term, so for the purposes of this video and the channel, let's go ahead and define that um, as food where the ingredients fuel our bodies um, with the appropriate amounts of macros and micros. Now it is true, there are tons of health benefits to high quality sushi, but your neighborhood sushi restaurant is not always giving you that high quality stuff. Now the problem with advising you on sushi choices is sushi is a very personal choice. You have a lot of preferences. So I can't really tell you what to eat and what not to eat because I don't know what you like, but I am going to give you some of the basic facts and then you can take them or leave them to make your own informed decisions. So let's just kind of break this down by macros. We're gonna start with Protein. Now sushi can be high in protein depending on what you're getting. If you're getting sashimi, which is usually raw, not always, but it's just the fish without the rice or the wrap or anything, um, then you're obviously getting a lot of protein and you're also getting awesome omega-3s and salmon, tuna, and yellowtail are all really great lower calorie options. They also have a nice dose of vitamin D. So next let's talk about fat. Sushi can be high in fat. Fat is not the enemy. Carbs are not the enemy. That is not the point of this video. As I mentioned many times in the Panera video, which I suggest watching if you haven't already, um, we still have to be aware of the total amounts of macronutrients that we are taking in, especially where those macros are coming from. So are those healthy ingredients that are going to fuel our bodies? Are those healthy fats? So when it comes to fat with sushi, there are a few keywords we should be aware of. Crunch. If a roll says crunch in it, uh, or tempura, that means it has been fried. Either the fish inside has been fried or the entire roll sometimes. Deep fried, not pan fried. Creamy or spicy sauces. Spicy is code for spicy mayonnaise. So that and cream cheese fillings are really things that should be avoided. They're not traditional in sushi anyways. And again, these videos aren't here to tell you to never eat the cream cheese sushi. This is if you're trying to make healthier choices. If you wanna go, you know, enjoy your sushi treat meal, go for it. Mega rolls or anything crazy fancy like double dragon flaming rainbow roll. Not only are those rolls really expensive, they are also loaded with those fatty ingredients. So the tempura, the cream cheese, the sauces, and usually all of it's together in one roll. That is not the fuel we want. Also, there are some restaurants that are kind of doing uh, nouveau sushi now, and they have short rib and cheese and all of these kind of crazy ingredients. And while they may be delicious, they are definitely not healthier. The more traditional of a roll you can get, the better off you're gonna be. So let's take a look at the macros for a shrimp tempura roll. One six to eight piece roll has a whopping 508 calories. It also has a whopping 21 grams of fat, 64 grams of carbs, four and a half grams of which are fiber, and 20 grams of protein. Just for fun, let's go ahead and compare those macros to that of a Big Mac from McDonald's. 540 calories, 28 grams of fat, 42 grams of carbs, three of which are fiber, and 25 grams of protein. As you can see, they're not that different. All right, moving on to the third and most intensive uh, macronutrient for sushi, carbs. Now the first ingredient that we have to talk about is the rice, obviously. Now rice is not a bad food. It can be very nutritious. Brown rice is a whole grain, so the bran and the germ have both been preserved um, in the final product. But with white rice, that is not the case. Because of that, brown rice has higher vitamins, minerals, and more fiber. And I talk a lot about the breakdown of the whole grain in my How to Choose Bread episode if you're interested. Now white rice can be an okay choice if you're getting a longer grain. The problem with sushi is it's a very short grain rice. It's very starchy and when it cooks up, it's really sticky, which makes it perfect for sushi, right? But that shorter grain starchy white rice also has a higher glycemic load, which means it can spike blood sugar levels. Now the rice alone is not the only concern. That sushi rice is not just rice, it is rice mixed with vinegar and sugar. Now the vinegar is not really the concern, but a typical sushi roll is prepared with 
one cup of sushi rice, and for each cup of sushi rice, you have at least one tablespoon of sugar. Now that's quite a bit, especially when most people aren't eating only one roll. We'll touch on that later. Now if each roll contains one cup of sushi rice, that is anywhere from 50 to 65 grams of carbs in the one roll. If a slice of bread has 15 to 20 grams of carbs, and some are less, that means that you're getting three to four slices of bread per roll minimum. I don't know about you, but I usually sit down and eat two sushi rolls. I could eat more. Now, would we ever sit down and think it's healthy to eat eight pieces of bread in one sitting, especially refined white bread? So what are some of the rice remedies so that we can make our sushi a little bit healthier? One, you can order without the rice. So a lot of the rolls can be prepared without the rice, not all of them, but it's good to ask. And some of them come without rice already. So scan your menu, ask your server, uh, are there any rolls available that can be made without rice? Uh, or don't come with rice. Next, you can order with brown rice. So most sushi restaurants these days will give you brown rice if you ask for it. Um, there have been times before where I ask for it and they're not able to do it because since it's not as starchy, it's not as sticky and it can't hold together as well in the roll. So certain rolls they can't do it, certain rolls they can, but you just gotta ask. I personally don't love the way the brown rice tastes in sushi. I think that, you know, the white rice just tastes so much better and it's worth it for me um, to order that. So if I don't want to eat the rice, rather than going with the brown, I choose option number three, which is a cucumber wrap. So this is sometimes called Naruto style. Um, but it pretty much means that instead of the rice and seaweed, your roll is being wrapped in cucumber. Now, I do this quite often and I actually think it's delicious. It adds a really nice crunch, adds great flavor, it makes it taste really, really fresh. I don't miss the rice at all. Some of the restaurants even have um, cucumber rolls already existing on the menu. Now that we've talked about the macros, let's take a few minutes to talk about the add-ons or condiments or sauces with your sushi. Wasabi, it is a great choice. It is packed with antioxidants and cancer-fighting properties, but you don't need much of it. Ginger, it boosts the immune system and has loads of vitamins and minerals. Soy sauce, so this is a touchy one. Um, most people know that you can get low sodium soy sauce. It usually comes on the table already with the green top instead of the red. Keep in mind, it is really lower sodium soy sauce. It's not actually low. So there's about 25% less salt in the lower sodium than the regular, which considering how much is in the regular isn't much. One thing that I do sometimes is add even a little bit of water to mine to dilute it even more. Or if you can just use a little bit less, you're gonna be fine. Another tip if you are worried about the sodium in the soy sauce, if you dip your fish into the sauce instead of the rice, you're gonna soak up less. Eel sauce. This is delicious, probably my favorite sauce, but it's got a lot of sugar in it. One tablespoon is 42 calories with nine grams of sugar. Spicy sauce. So remember, we talked about spicy as code word for mayo, mayonnaise. It's pretty much mayonnaise mixed with an Asian chili sauce. And one tablespoon is 99 calories and 11 grams of fat. Avocado. Now, it does contain a lot of fat, but it is monounsaturated fats. That being said, even with the healthy fats, it can add up the calories pretty quickly. If you're gonna choose some of those other fattier ingredients, you may wanna opt for some of the vegetables instead of the avocado, or go for the avocado instead of some of the sauces. Kind of find that balance. So now let's take a look at some of the macros for a uh, classic rolls. We already talked about the tempura roll. The California roll, the most common of all the rolls. So the California roll has about 266 calories, eight grams of fat, 38 grams of carbs, six of which are fiber, and nine grams of protein per roll. It's actually a decently healthy roll. Eel and avocado roll, a delicious one. 372 calories, 17 grams of fat, 31 grams of carbs, six of which are fiber, and 20 grams of protein. So the macros aren't terrible um, if you're getting one roll. Remember that that sauce does have a decent amount of sugar in it. This may be more of a treat roll or um, just get it on its own and opt for, you know, a soup or salad on the side instead of a second roll. Spicy tuna roll. 290 calories, 11 grams of fat, 26 grams of carbs, three and a half which are fiber, and 24 grams of protein. 
Spicy is a bad word, remember? You are better off ordering a plain tuna roll and adding a little bit of wasabi for the spice. The plain tuna roll is only 184 calories, two grams of fat, 27 grams of carbs, three and a half, which are fiber, and 24 grams of protein. So you see, it cuts back on the fat significantly. Philadelphia roll. So this is like the fakest sushi roll ever, even though it's delicious. 300 calories, 12 grams of fat, 28 grams of carbs, two of which are fiber, and 14 grams of protein. I love cream cheese, but trust me, it is adding that fat in there. It's not a terrible amount, but it's not fueling you either. So if you do want this roll, uh, make that your one choice for the night and get, you know, the soup and salad or something else. Now keep in mind, the lower calorie rolls aren't necessarily better for you. So a cucumber roll is only 136 calories, zero grams of fat, 30 grams of carbs, three and a half, which are fiber and six grams of protein. But it's really not offering much nutrition or fuel. You're getting very little cucumber and mostly rice. So think of that food as fuel as something that's gonna make your calories count. The last point I wanna make before we head out to get some sushi is mercury. Now I don't wanna make it a huge talking point, but it's worth mentioning if you eat sushi a lot. Now, some fish that are used in sushi have high amounts of mercury, which we wanna to avoid too much of because it can affect our brain and kidneys. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't ever enjoy them, just be aware, um, kind of have them in moderation, even though I hate that word. Pretty much, if you're not eating sushi, you know, every day or every week, you're probably fine. Just try to keep to those ones that are lower in mercury more often if you can. Let's go get some sushi. So the first roll that I decided to get was one of the cucumber wrapped rolls, sometimes known as Naruto rolls. Um, but this one actually was already pre-existing on the menu. It's um, salmon, tuna, kaiware, which I think is like a, a daikon or a radish sprout. Um, avocado wrapped in cucumber. And another thing that um, we didn't talk about um, when we were before we came here is soy paper. So that's another option if you don't want rice um, that you can get instead of cucumber. It's low fat, low calories. I don't think it's as flavorful. I don't think it adds anything texturally like the cucumber does. Um, but that is an option. So this is what I'm starting with. So a tip if you want to lighten up your soy sauce is to add a little bit of water to it. So I just like to take a little bit of water in my straw and um, dilute it a little bit. So let's take a bite. Mm. It's really crunchy. It's packed with protein. I get my fat from my avocado and of course the omega-3s in the fish. And it's totally satisfying. It's really good. So the second roll that I got is the rainbow roll. It's pretty much a California roll with assorted fish on top of it. Now you can see that I opted for the normal white rice. So as I told you before, I'm not nuts about the brown rice. Now I don't want to discourage you from trying it because tons of people ask for brown rice. Um, this menu even says on the menu that they can do it for an additional charge. Um, I am just like picky about the taste. I just think that the white rice, I have a much better sushi experience and the macros aren't that different. So if I'm just gonna get one roll with rice, I'll just go for the white. Um, the other thing to consider is really the difference other than the short grain, long grain we talked about, um, you know, is the fiber. And you have to think about the balance of your whole diet. So all day long I've been eating tons of fruits and vegetables. I know that I have plenty of fiber in me and not getting that extra fiber from the brown rice isn't really gonna hurt me right now. So anyways, pretty much since I went lower carb, lower calorie on the first roll, the second roll, it's, you know, I'm indulging a little bit. I, you know, we talked about the California roll isn't really bad for you and I have that additional protein uh, and omega-3s on top. So this is a pretty nutritious dish. So it's hard to estimate um, any kind of sushi roll because every place makes them a little bit differently. Um, but with some basic estimations for the rainbow roll and the cucumber roll that I got, we can guess that my total meal, not including the edamame that I uh, munched on at the beginning, is about 560 calories, 20 grams of fat, 55 grams of carbs, and 46 grams of protein. So it's really a pretty balanced meal. It's not, you know, overindulgent in calories, and I feel like I'm really enjoying my food. I don't feel like I have to make any sacrifices to enjoy this. So 
So one last tip that I have is because sushi usually comes in a roll of six to eight pieces, that's not that many pieces if you eat the whole piece in one bite like I just did. So really take your time. Use your chopsticks to help slow you down. Drink water in between every single bite. You know, just don't rush the experience. Think about, you know, enjoying every single piece as you eat it. Also, ordering your rolls one at a time like I did today um, can help slow you down. So maybe you think you're really, really hungry, um, but once you start to eat and get more full, uh, you might realize you don't need the three or four rolls that when you sat down you thought you did. So take your time eating. So those are my tips uh, for making healthy choices, food as fuel choices, when eating out um, at a sushi restaurant. I hope that you found them useful or enlightening, and if you have any additional tips, feel free to share them in the comments below and if you have any other requests for dining debunked episodes whether it's like this a type of cuisine uh, that you'd like tips on or a specific restaurant definitely leave those in the comments below as well and if you do like these videos don't forget to give them a thumbs up because that helps me know that you like them I hope you guys have a great weekend I will see you Monday for a brand new episode and remember it's all a matter of mind over lunch